I'd like to thank you all for having me. Thank you, Ms. Scripture. There you go. As, she, as uh, Ms. Scripture said, my name is Hira. I was, uh, sorry, I visited the poor. I was a volunteer first responder uh, during the 9-11 terrorist attacks in New York City. So, here's kind of the layout of the area. So these two, this is Tower 2 and this is Tower 1. Tower 1 had the antenna on the top of it. So I was right here on the 36th floor looking that way when this happened. So basically I was here and the two towers were here. This whole area, if you look at the key, so there was no damage in the green, moderate damage in the yellow, major damage in the blue, and partial collapse red and full collapse in the black. So it says partial collapse, but if you look at the pictures, you'll see that it was pretty destroyed. So this is another view. I was in this building here, and here were the two towers. And then that one, they said partial collapse. So the towers were laid here. And that was the Marriott Hotel and the Financial Center. Basically, I'm giving you a layout. Uh, the first plane flew into World Trade Center 1 this way, and all the debris from that went that way. And the other plane flew here, and all the debris went here, and I was right here. Um, so that gives you a little better of an idea of how this uh, layout was and how the planes impacted the building where the debris went. My building on the inside. They blew out 750 windows on the inside of the building. So when the when the collapse happened, when the buildings collapsed, the, that is what the World Trade Center looked like after the collapse. And that's the front of the building, my building, on the Liberty Plaza. That's what it looked like when it collapsed. started in this building, I ended up over here before the collapse. And I'll tell you how once we start asking the question. Um, this is where the, they call it a uh, staging zone, which is where all the firefighters and ambulances and all the emergency personnel started to stage. So they all started to come into the area there. The World Trade Centers are over here. This is called West Side Highway. And this is the financial area that I showed you in that picture. So that's an overview. That's what it looked like from that side. Okay, so now I'm going to start with questions. Who has question one? <clears throat> um, I'm Sabina, and uh, how close was the place that you worked? Like, wait, how close was the place that you worked to in the Twin Towers? Okay, so here's World Trade Center 1, 1, and here's World Trade Center 2. Here's where I was. So it gives you an idea as to how close I was. So um, I was across the street, basically, and we had lunch. They had a mall in here, so we would go in here very often and have lunch in the World Trade Center, underneath the World Trade Center. Oh, that's so, it was close. All right, so number two, and then I will go back. Uh, my name is uh, Seth, and uh, what were you doing when it happened? Well, I had a job inside the World Trade Center, uh, sorry, inside One Liberty Plaza. I was doing public relations. So uh, I was working like a regular day. It was a beautiful, clear, amazing day. Um, I remember coming out of the subway and looking up and it was beautiful and looking at the towers and it was lovely. So I was working there and uh, I believe I was Skyping a friend who was somewhere and because we started at nine so I was Skyping a friend and I remember hearing the, ex the explosion. I didn't know it was a plane. So I remember hearing the explosion and when the plane hit here, 
So when the plane hit, where am I? World Trade Center 1, when the plane hit it, all the debris went over the water. So I remember look, hearing the explosion, our building shook a little, and I remember looking out the window and it was black smoke and papers everywhere. There were papers everywhere. And I didn't, as I said, I didn't know it was a plane. I thought it was just an explosion. Honestly, we all thought it was a bomb. So I having, I just finished my EMT certification. So I just became certified. Here is my, what I had. So that's my certification. I just became certified. So if you want to pass it around the scripture. And my, I know there's a question that asked this. But my first thought was, I need to get down there and help. What my first thought was, I need to get down there and help the first responders that were on scene. Because I knew there weren't that many first responders during, when the first plane, when the first explosion happened. Um, okay, question three. Um, I'm sorry, what's your name? Elizabeth. Okay. How did it make you feel when it first happened? It was more of a reactionary feeling. So you can sit. Um, it was more of a reactionary feeling. So not understanding what was going on, I was like, um, first I, I couldn't understand what was going on. It wasn't registering. I thought it was an explosion. My feeling was I needed to get down there and help. I need to get down there and help the first responders and help the people that were coming out. Um, that was my first reaction was I need to help. Second thought was how do I get down there? Because all of our alarms were going off in our building and I was on the 36th floor. So I had to figure out, compared to where I was and there was smoke everywhere and dust, how to get down the building and then where to go. So I will come back to that. So that, that was, did that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, next question. I believe we're at four. Sorry. Hello, I, my name's Adrian. How did you get to the scene? I ran. I, basically, um, to be perfectly honest, I was there. I actually did the wrong thing. The alarms were going off. My thought was I need to get down. You can sit. Um, my thought, thought was I need to get down there. So um, I took the elevator, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do when fire alarms are going off in the building. I took the elevator and I got down to the ground floor and there was absolute chaos, basically is the best thing I can say. Chaos. People were screaming, people were in shock, people were scared. I, once again, my thought was I need to help, so I went to the security desk and they said, you need to stay in the building, and I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to. So <laughs> I went and I basically <laughs> ran right here, I know I have my pointer, right here to this corner here. So I left the building and I crossed the street and I ran to this corner here, at which point I asked a, they're called Port Authority Police. So basically they're the police that are in charge of the transit, but this was a Port Authority building, so it was a public building. So the trains ran through here. There were something called um, path trains that ran through there uh, for rush hour. And this was during rush hour. It was at 8.46 in the morning, so people were arriving to work. So to answer your question, I ran. Uh, next question, five. Um, okay, I was here at that point, sorry, right here at that point, um, and I was inside a building, so I was inside, I was inside this building here, right there, and we were setting up secondary triage. Primary triage basically means when you rescue the people, you bring them down. Primary triage was in the south tower, so the one without the antenna, 
and you bring them down and the medics, the paramedics, the EMTs look at them and say, okay, they're, and you put labels, tags on them. So you have green, yellow, red, and you put tags on them to the severity. Red is the worst, green is okay. So I was in the secondary triage, so I would have gotten yellow and, and green. So I was in that building, I was standing there with a group of other uh, medics, paramedics, EMTs, and we were standing there waiting for people to come in. At which point, because I'm from California, I know what a rumble is, I know what an earthquake is, and I know that earthquake sound. I don't know how many of you know that sound, but when it's coming, you know that sound. And I heard that sound and I'm like, automatic, I was like, earthquake, and then I'm like, no, I'm in New York. So I looked out and suddenly everything was dusty, and um, I took off. I ran up the stairs and uh, went to the back of the building here, right there. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, next question, six. My name is Riley, and what was your main goal at that Main goal, when, so I have to explain something first. I had no idea it was planes until much later in the day. None. No idea. I thought it was bombs. I didn't understand how they could get two bombs in each tower. Um, it didn't make sense to me. Um, my goal was to help as many people as I could. Um, although I could feel that the scene and the, the whole situation was getting worse, uh, was getting more tense, was getting more I don't like to use the word scary, but it was getting more tense. You could feel that it was going wrong quickly. Um, but I thought, still thought it was a bomb, and I thought that uh, the New York Fire Department could put it out, and I thought that people were going to come out. So my main goal was to help as many people as I could, because that's what I was trained to do, and that's what I love doing, and that's, that's what I was there to do. So. It was odd when I found that there weren't many people coming out. That was strange to all of us. Um, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a hard thing to swallow. Okay. Did that answer? Uh, my name is John, and the question is, was it the scariest day of your life? Like I said, I don't like to use the word scary because. I had a lot of adrenaline in me, so I was pretty much running on adrenaline. So I, afterwards, later on in the day, I could say I was scared for what was going to happen. But there was a point in that day when everything was getting, as I said, more and more tense, when I said to myself, you're dead. I was dead. That day I was dead. And I said to myself, Harry, you're dead but you're going to save as many people as you can until you actually get killed. Because it was inevitable in my mind that I was going to die that day. And, and I was okay with that because I was okay with helping people before that happened. So, um, scary as no. Traumatic, maybe. Stressful, yes. Um, one had to think on their feet very quickly and also use your gut and not your head. Your head, you would have died. If you would have questioned anything, I would have died. So I used my gut. Now, you know how you have gut feelings? Yeah. You've got to go with your gut feelings. Okay. Does that answer? Is that okay. I just want to be clear. Okay, go ahead. Who has another question? My name is Marie, and how did the attack affect your life after? Could you want me to be honest? Mm -hmm. Immediately afterwards, well, a few days, I was a, not a nice person. I was a very angry person. I was a very um, arrogant, I could say. I had a lot of, as I said, I thought I, I, I knew I was going to die. I didn't die. I watched thousands of people die. Thousands of people get killed, including first responders. Um, and I didn't die which made me feel very guilty. So the guilt came out and I was like, angry, I could say, angry, angry at the world, 
angry at everything, angry at everybody. Um, I didn't understand everybody's grief in where I had no idea that it affected even Upper Manhattan, because you have all of this, right? I, had, I only thought that it affected Lower Manhattan. I had no idea it affected Upper Manhattan. I had no idea it affected anywhere else besides here. So when I came out of it, I was like, wait, why is everybody gone? I don't understand. Why, why did they, they evacuated the whole city. The whole city evacuated. They shut the bridges down, so that's one way in, one way in. They shut the bridges down. You weren't allowed to come in, you weren't, and you could only walk out. So people were all walking across those bridges, taking ferries out of here. So um, first I was angry, and I had a guilt, a survivor guilt, they call it. Little by little, I understood that I was living and spared for a reason. Um, and so now I realize that I have to be kind nice and helpful, loving. I don't forget to those that I love. I don't forget to say I love you to them. I find that very important when I, you know, like my mother, my sister, people in my lives, even friends, I'll say I love you to and I appreciate you because I think it's important because honestly in my life, my world, today is, tomorrow is never promised. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be around. I, you know, you don't know. Life, life is like that. So having that and what I saw made me realize I need to tell people I love them because I need to make sure they know I love them, just in case. Because the things I saw that day, you realize and in your mind you think to yourself, did that person that I saw, who is now dead, say to their significant other or to their family member that they love them? I don't know, but it made you think about that when you saw, when I saw certain things. So that's how it changed my life. That's how it really changed my life. Um, now, I know that I'm ahead of schedule, and I spoke pretty quick. So I'm going to ask our visitor. <laughs> Costin. Do you have a question? Oh, do I have a question? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, there's so many questions. I'm, I'm emotional because I, I remember that day very well. Um, did you, um, were you able to go back to your, what you were doing? Before? You said you were from California. Were you visiting in New York no, or working? No, I worked there. I lived so there. did you, I lived there for two and a half were years. you able to go back to what you, I mean, I know the buildings um, were all demolished, but were you, how Our did, building went through a lot of renovation, okay. so we were moved to another building on town on 14th, 14th and Broadway, I think. So we were moved there and I did go back to work. But okay. I had a bad back prior and I just exasperated the problem really badly, so I had to have a spine operation, a spinal fusion, mm -hmm. um, on the 14th of February, not that on Wednesday. And uh, <laughs> that, that, that kind of, my rehab was three months. So, so you had a spinal problem I before 9-11? I had spinal problems okay. with 9-11, really? jumping and doing everything I did, just to say, just to get out of the way, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, wow. So, any more questions? Were there, did we go through all ten? I think we did, didn't we? No? No, oh, what sorry. number did we leave all ten? Eight. Oh, right. Who has the top? Sorry, I thought we went through all ten. Yeah. Um, when Carl said, what was your kids response? I'm sorry? What was the response to it? What was it like responding to it? Like I said, I didn't know what I was running into. I thought it was an explosion. I thought it was a bomb. I had no idea what was going to happen. None of us knew what was going to happen that day. Otherwise, firefighters would never have gone into the building. Emergency services would never have gone into that building or those buildings. Um, I wasn't stressed. I was focused. I wasn't scared. I was focused. There's a very different, there's a big difference. Um, I was focused in helping. I was focused in 
helping my fellow first responders. I was focused on helping the victims, which there weren't that many, unfortunately. Um, there were two kinds of victims. There were those that perished, and there were, there were those who could walk. Those who could walk, walk. We let them go. Right. Here's bandages. We bandage them up. We say, go to the next ambulances. But unfortunately, they all, they walked home. They walked to Brooklyn. Um, they walked across the bridge because there were a herd of people. So they walked across the bridge with bloody heads. Um, so it was afterwards, it was emotional. During the time, I was focused. I was listening to my gut. I was focused. But afterwards, I did break down. Once I got into, once I got up to Midtown Manhattan, and I actually saw that nobody was there, and it was a practically ghost town, I did start to cry because it was very emotional there. So, good. Mm -hmm. Laugh. Yeah. There's one more question out there. Where is it? Oh. Uh, my name is Grant. How tense was it when you knew the towers went down right across the street? Mm -hmm. So, when the first tower went down, I was here. Remember? First tower went down was here. That was not my tower just. I was in the front of this building. I had to run out to the back of the building when I heard the earthquake and the smoke in front, the dust. The crazy thing is, we were back here. We couldn't breathe. Our eyes were killing us. We were coughing. It was pandemonium, dust was everywhere, but I had, we had no idea that that tower had just fallen down. No, no idea. And you're going to all think to yourself, how do you have no idea that a 102 story building didn't, uh, just fell? Well, we had no idea because we were sheltered. We were back here. There was dust, but all these buildings took the impact. So we had no idea. We had, we had an idea that there was something that went badly wrong. We smelt. Like, all my senses were alive, all my senses were triggered, sight, sound, smell, everything. So we were here, we kind of walked around and made our way back to West Side Highway, right here. And when we were on West Side Highway, we looked back and you could see this tower here. You could see this tower. So therefore, I didn't know it at all, none of us did. You could hear, you could see the, the dust everywhere. There was like all this like moon dust, I call it, everywhere. But you didn't, I didn't know that the tower should fall. So that was an interesting thing. Now, I was trying to help people here, but they all refused medical attention. They were all mostly firefighters. They had bloody noses, they were stressed out. I did, I tried to help, I asked them if they needed help. But I don't know if you've ever been in New York. New York City firefighters are kind of burly or kind of tough. <laughs> and they don't want help. And um, I did not know that the tower had fallen. And their brothers, as they say, their brothers and sisters, their fellow firefighters, were in that building when it collapsed. So they were more interested in helping and digging to find their brothers and sisters. All these emergency vehicles that you see, all pretty much went into the towers. I watched them. I watched them running into the towers to save people. That was their objective, as it was mine, to save people. So 343 emergency personnel perished, giving their lives to save others. Yes, scripture. You mentioned, are you comfortable? You and I were talking earlier, and you mentioned a sound that haunts you. Yeah. yeah. So, firefighters, I don't know if any of you know this, where, have you ever seen a fire show, like, I don't know, Chicago what, Fire or whatever it is? They all wear these things on them that chirp when they don't move for a few seconds, like 20 or 30 seconds. If they're down, if they get hit, if they get, you know, something falls on them and they go down, that's the way that other firefighters find them. And it makes this chirping noise. It haunts me. It makes this chirping noise. So when I went back into where the World Trade Centers were, in near that, near this, because I went back here, oh, went back to this area in the afternoon, <clears throat> everything was on fire. It looked like hell. It looked like hell. Everything was on fire. It looked terrible. Um, it looked like um, 
Godzilla and uh, Godzilla and uh, King Kong. Thank you. King Kong came and destroyed the city. Um, but there was that chirping noise. So much chirping noise. Beep, beep, beep. And I asked one of the first responders, medics that I was with, what is that noise? He said, those are fallen firefighters. Those are that all is that all that noise are fallen firefighters, and that haunts me. When I hear that sound, it brings me back to that. I'll get to you in a second. He has had a. Yes. Um, have you gone to the memorial? I have. I have. In fact, um, a few weeks later, we were able to go into our offices and collect our our belongings. And it's. Uh, I'll go back to this. Um, it was so weird because the computer that I was on, that I was skyping on froze because it shut down. It froze at that moment at 8.47, 8.46, 8 just froze. And my conversation with my friend is still up. And that was really strange to me. So a few years ago, about four years ago, I went back. And actually, I hadn't been back prior. And actually, I had to walk the whole way around, the whole way around and relive that day just to deal with it in my head. Walk the whole way around and I'm like, okay, this is what happened here. This bridge, right here, I will not walk across. I will not, it's still there. They kept it, that bridge there. I won't walk across it though. There's no way I'll walk across that bridge. And I won't walk across that bridge for so many reasons. Um, a lot of, you saw and you heard about people that jumped out of the towers, yes? Okay. A lot of the people that jumped out of the towers, crazy enough, landed on that bridge. They also landed on another bridge that was there. I won't go across those bridges. I will go out of the building. I will go around. But I had to walk all the way around the area, including the memorial site, which, in my honest opinion, I don't like those those fountain things. I don't like it. Uh, if you want to know why, I'll tell you why, but I don't like them. Um, the museum is cool. You guys should go. If you go to New York, the museum is cool. In fact, one of my pictures that I took is in that museum, um, which was shocking when I saw it. So, yeah, I, I have been to the memorial, and I like the museum. I'm glad they didn't build anything on the actual sites of the World Trade Center, but I have my own memorial in my heart and in my, my memories. Um, so it was hard to because you have to relive everything again in order to process it. Yes. Was it tense when you saw people jumping out of the building? Tense? It was terrible. As I was trained to help, I was trained to save, I couldn't. I couldn't do a thing. And it gets me choked up. I couldn't do a thing. I had to just stand there and watch. And my first instinct was to run. And in fact, when I started to put a step forward, one of the firefighters or EMTs that I was with whatever, grabbed my shoulder and said, don't do it here. You can't do anything about it. So I had to watch. It's terrible. Um, especially when you're trained to help. And you can't. Yes? How do you like not let the fire? I'm sorry, what? How do you not let the fire? What? Okay. <clears throat> day, the day after, I went into the area, okay? I went in to see if I could help. I went in to see if there were any more survivors. It was like hell. The heat, the smoke, like hell. I stood on one of these beams, they're the steel beams, I stood on one, I looked down, and I had a 50 foot drop on each side of me. They were big holes, okay? Those, those fountains, I don't know if you've seen pictures of them. They're big holes. They're big black holes with water going in. I don't want to see that. I would have preferred to see something that rises, something that is light. They're big black holes, and that reminds me. That reminds me of uh, the dick. That reminds me of this. Does that make sense? You can understand that. If that. Uh, yes. Do you want me to bring up photos of the fountains? Yeah. Have a visual. You had a question. Yeah. Uh, how many children do you Oh, dude, who knows? Who knows? Probably, what, you said 200 firefighters? 200 firefighters? That's on there. 
at the same time? Yeah. Well, yeah, because they all went down pretty much at the same time. It was, imagine 200 of those. Go on YouTube and put in firefighter chirping or something like that. You'll hear that noise. I don't know, can you do that? Uh, yeah. You can do the noise?
gets in touch with because there was no phone service. No phone, no cell, no nothing, because that antenna was basically the cell antenna for the whole area. So when that antenna fell, we cut communication across New York, uh, lower Manhattan. Um, so finally, after a few hours, my sister's in LA. She still is. She was living in Manhattan Beach. She called me, and what time is the period? Of? 31. About. She called me, and uh, finally she has in touch with me. And I, my first, this chokes me up, so bear with me. She, um, she said to me, I answered the phone, and I'm like, my name's Priya. And I said, Priya, um, I'm alive. And she answers me, well, of course you're alive, you're answering the phone. I said, I don't know, you have no idea what I've been through today. And so she's like, she said to me, she goes, well, I go, what happened? And she said, well, basically, hijackers took the plane and flew it into the buildings. I'm like, I don't, what do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. She's like, hijackers took the plane and flew it into the building. And I'm like, I, I don't understand you, Priya. And I passed her off to another, the paramedic that was with me. I passed her off, so that's when I found her. Because, but I didn't register. There was so much that went on that day. So much that my brain was taking in that it just didn't register. In my head. I, I didn't get it. Like, how would you take a plane and fly it into a building? Something that's never been done. Oh, didn't make sense. Wait, thank you, have a question. Okay. Um, so my grandpa has this friend. He was visiting from New York this weekend, and he was talking to me about it. And he said that the people that were on the planes were like talking to trying to talk to people. And he said he could hear the terrorists um, speaking, like saying like, "Let's go" and that thing. That was the um, Philadelphia one. I don't know. The one that was going towards uh, Washington D.C. Yeah, he the, said like yeah. one of the. They brought that plane down. Was it Philadelphia? No, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Thank yeah. you so much. Pennsylvania one, they brought the plane, the passengers brought the plane down because they knew it was, they had heard about all the other attacks, the Pentagon attack, this attack, and they knew that they were headed for uh, one of the, the Capitol building or the White House. So they decided to overtake the plane, and at which point the terrorists just nosedived it into the field. So, yes. Yes, great. Sure. Um, must have been during the day. Somebody must have said the Pentagon. I think somebody said the Pentagon got hit. Kind of what? Oh, what time did the? I don't remember what time the Pentagon got hit. So I, it was during the day that it was the rumors, because nothing was sure. Like you heard a lot of rumors, like they were going to bomb us, they were attacking us, that there were more planes hijacked, they're all headed for New York. You know, we were under attack. That, those were the rumors. They had bombed, maybe during that time, they had bombed the Pentagon, you know, whatever. That's why they closed the airspace. That's why one guy, whose, whose first day it was, closed the airspace down in all of the United States. Which I think is pretty cool. And probably saved a lot of lives. So uh, he closed the airspace down. So it was really strange because when we were down there, um, I remember the firefighters and everybody was talking and they're like, if you hear a plane, just dive under something because they're attacking us. Just dive under a fire truck, just dive under whatever you can to take cover and, you know, just take cover. And at that, like five minutes later, five minutes later, we hear these jets fly over us, like Zeph 16 military jets, and we're all like, whoa, but thankfully it was a military. Yeah, they were a little late. <laughs> Better than <laughs> never, they said. Yes? Um, where was your family when it happened? Where was my family? Yeah. My sister was in Manhattan Beach. My mother was in Los Angeles. My sister lied to my mother. My mother, um, my sister knew that I worked right across the street. My sister knew that I had the character to run into the incredibly crazy. I, I always run into danger. That's what I do. It's just impulse. Uh, it's stronger than I am. I have to help. So my sister knew that I was there. My mother was home. I think my sister called my mother and said, wake up. And of course, my mother's like, whatever. Anyway, so uh, she's like, no, no, wake up. And then my mother's like, well, where is Hera? Oh, she works miles away, blocks away. Don't worry, she's fine. But my sister knew that I was here. So my sister was frantically trying to get in touch with me and making plans to drive out to New York to find me if she had to if she hadn't gotten in touch with me. 
So um, my, my family was all here in, the, in California, in Los Angeles. They were a little worried. Okay, who else? I saw somebody else's hand, didn't I? Come on, one more question and we're done. You had your hand up, didn't you? Well, I but oh, um, where were like when you guys were taking shelter and with the firemen, did you like help them out after? Or? Um, you mean like search in the debris? Yeah. No. No, I didn't search in the debris. Um, I helped the people that were around it. I helped the people that were bloody, but I didn't go into that debris. It was way too dangerous. I ran on fire still. Like. It was still on fire, so no, I didn't go in there because it was, you know, there, there were a lot of other firefighters there already. Yes? Um, what about the chirping sound? Oh, the chirping sound. Thank you for reminding me. I'm not sure which video will work, but we'll see if this you tell us. touch with any first responders or anyone you met or was it one of those things where you just want to move on and not? Nope. I am in touch with a gentleman named Gary Smiley. He was a paramedic. In fact, he was the one that probably saved my life. I credit him with saving my life just because he took me away from, he said, stay in my ambulance. Did you freeze it? I did. I thought um, uh, He took me out of the area, so I was. Oh, I was here when the first, pl the second plane crashed into the building. It was his ambulance that I jumped into when the debris came over us. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when the debris came over the plane. I didn't know it was a plane. Once again, I had no idea it was a plane. Uh, when they had that um, this, so when this plane hit, it. This is turned around. When this plane hit, right there, this plane here, when it hit, I was right here. All the debris fell where I was standing. I jumped in his ambulance um, to take cover, along with every other responder who was there. I remember I was a cop laid on top of me, pushed my head down and laid on top of me to protect me. And I remember thinking to myself, hey, I'm an EMT, why would you get on me? Stop it. But I, I didn't say it, I was quiet. Then I heard stuff hitting the top of the ambulance and the ambulance moving. I still had no idea it was a plane, and I hear people screaming. Anyway, that that first responder, Gary Smiley, he says, you're staying with me. Um, stay in my truck. They called it a bus. They call it a bus in New York. Mm -hmm. Stay in my bus. And he's like, I was here in 93 with the first terrorist attacks in the World Trade Center. I'm taking you around to the first state, the, 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 the staging area, which was over here on Vesey and West Highway. He's like, stay with me, we're going there. So I'm in touch with him. Every year we speak on the, every year we speak on September 11th, um, without fail. And he was the one actually that I went to the Memorial Museum with the first time. Um, first time. Okay. Thank you very Round much. Of applause for this